In the last presentation, I talked about uh, sinus arrest or sinus pause, and now on page 62, I want to talk about sinus exit block. And um, sinus exit block is uh, pretty rare. Uh, frankly, I have never seen it. In fact, that's why I had to actually hand draw this rhythm uh, to, to show you what a sinus exit block looks like. Um, but I want to talk about sinus exit block just to do a quick comparison between it and uh, what we what I talked about in the last presentation, which is sinus arrest. So sinus exit block is fairly rare, and uh, let me just explain what happens here. So the rate in sinus exit block may vary. Typically, the underlying heart rate is normal, and uh, P waves are normal in the underlying rhythm. The PR interval will be normal. QRS is narrow, typically ratios one to one, and the rhythm is regular except where disrupted by the drop P wave. So what happens then is that um, the underlying rhythm is, is sinus, we see a P wave and a QRS, and then we see this pause, much like the pause we saw in sinus arrest or sinus pause. The big difference here though is that um, if you look at the r to r interval, um, then there's a pause. Something happens here that's different. Um, First and foremost, there's only one dropped beat, and then the next beat falls exactly into sequence, exactly into sequence from the underlying rhythm. In sinus arrest or sinus pause, which I talked about in the last presentation, we don't see this. What we see in sinus arrest is uh, typically at least two beats dropped, and the next beat is an escape beat, and the, the P wave morphology is different, and, and the uh, QRS falls out of sequence from the others. So sinus exit block is quite rare. Um, not generally as serious as a sinus rest or sinus pause, uh, but the mechanism is different, and, and that makes it kind of interesting. In sinus exit block, or sorry, sinus arrest or sinus pause in the past presentation, uh, the SA node failed to fire, and then there was this long pause and then an escape uh, beat. In sinus exit block, on the other hand, the SA node uh, fires normally, continues to fire at its normal rate, but at one point it fires and it cannot escape the surrounding tissue, and that's why it's called exit block. It can't exit the surrounding tissue, and that's simply because the surrounding tissue is in a refractory period. It's not able to respond to another impulse, and so consequently we see this single dropped beat, and so the pause is typically short, and the next beat falls exactly into sequence. So again, this is rare. We don't see it as often as sinus pause or sinus arrest. The mechanism is different, and uh, the chances of seeing a sinus exit block are pretty uh, unlikely. As I say, I've been a paramedic for 25 years. I worked as a cardiotech for a number of years and did Holter monitoring for quite a few years and saw literally thousands upon thousands of ECGs, and I have not yet seen a sinus exit block. Now, um, you may go out there and see four or five in your career, um, but I, I just haven't. So it's a pretty uncommon occurrence. But the mechanism is different, and, and that makes it kind of interesting. And sinus uh, pause or sinus arrest, the SA node fails to fire, followed by a long pause where at least two beats are dropped, sinus exit block, the SA node continues to fire, but at one point the impulse from the SA node just can't get around that surrounding tissue as I just described, and so we see a single drop beat and a short pause. 